Hi, we're here at Broadcom. We're going to take a look at the Broadcom LTE solution, So, let's, which is the VCM21892. All right. Thank you for coming, Brian. Uh, happy to have you here at Mobile World Congress. Following up to our CES discussions where we showed you voice over LTE solution, we have recently launched our LTE product and we'd like to show a number of capabilities that we have. First, you'll see here a Broadcom-based uh, smartphone running Android mm -hmm. that uses our 21892 LTE chip. It packages the baseband, the radio, plus the memory in a very small single chip. Right. It has a front-end module and a multi-band multi PA. Nice. It has a number of other Broadcom components as well that you see on the raw PCB. Here is a quad-core chip from Broadcom 28155. And then we have our leading edge 11 AC solution with 2 and 5 gigahertz channel capability. Nice. We use these smartphone platforms for a number of developments. So right now we're focused on the LTE aspects, but as you can imagine, we also test the integration of LTE with Wi-Fi and the ability to have NFC and GPS in those and manage all the radios and the power consumption really well. Right. Awesome. So uh, the capabilities I'd like to showcase is a high-speed demonstration first. Cool. Uh, the chip supports Category 4. Mm -hmm. Category 4 means that I can have a 20 MHz LTE channel right. and support 150 megabits per second downlink and 50 megabits per second uplink. Right. You're currently looking at the display and wondering why I'm showing you less than advertised. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is but it's speed test though. This is speed test application yeah. there with IP packet and TCP overhead yeah. included. So once you subtract those, you come up with a raw file layer throughput of about 150 down and 50 up. Right. They need it, to make the test longer too, I think. Well, yeah, I guess I made it so short because if you do it on the internet, yeah. you consume yeah, a lot of back yeah, traffic. Yeah. <laughs> this is a hosted demonstration so right. that we can achieve the speeds. We have our device cabled right. to an Anritsu base station emulator and then Broadcom hosted server where we have purchased from Okla the speed test application. Oh, nice. yeah, yeah, so yeah. It's, a, it's, the, it's the real Okla app so that we don't fiddle with it, but it is nice. the real deal. Cool. The and this is, the, this is the base station emulator you're running it on? Yeah, this is one of the uh, Enritzo devices yep. we're using for that purpose. Very familiar. The next demonstration, okay. perhaps um, one step up, we want to do a wireless version of that. Mm -hmm. So we also show at this uh, trade show our, f our phones over the air. Oh, cool. Wow. So what you see here is, is one of these phones. It runs basic Android. It has our debug connector, so we can do all kinds of diagnostics oh, okay. because it's a development platform. Right. Other than that, it has only my fingers attached to it. And it talks <laughs> There's to no this, wires. Yeah, no wires. <laughs> it talks to the space station. I have the, the speed test app that everybody's very familiar with. And I have to oh, warn cool. you, because I am backhaul limited, Yes. we only got 10, megahertz, 10 megabits per second at the end of the day from FIRA, so oh, okay. when we start the test, it won't be super fast, but it's over the air. So uh, Barcelona server, the ping was 47 milliseconds, we're doing even less than 10, you know, it's middle of the day, so with the latencies and, uh, and the backhaul sharing, we'll get yeah, 6 and then probably 5 up, that's what we typically see. They are four and a half to five. Gotcha. But I already showed you category four. We yeah. have 20 megahertz Cables up and up. running. Yeah. So no strings attached. Nice. I'm going to show working. you a demo that takes it up one notch. Oh, cool. And that is using the same 21892 development platform. You see it here again. It is yet, uh, it is cabled again to a base station emulator. Okay. But this time we show carrier aggregation. Oh, okay, cool. So in this setup, we have our 21892 mm -hmm. cabled to uh, an Anritsu base station right. again, and we have two 10 megahertz channels. We have a primary carrier, 10 megahertz band 17, and we have a secondary carrier, as we call it, which is band 4, right. also 10 megahertz. Cool. And we have. I wonder who that is. <laughs> That's AT&T. Yeah. Oh, well, you said it. I did. <laughs> Why are we doing this? So uh, we run a test script where every 30 seconds we turn on and off the secondary carrier. Right. And oh, the bandwidth cool. processed in the phone goes from 10 megahertz and 75 megabits to 20 megahertz and 150 megabits per second. 
So then what you see as we go up and down, you see throughput in the 10 megahertz case with only one carrier of about 75 megabits per second. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, this is the scale of throughput. And when the second carrier is on, you see it above 140 megabits right. per second. And you see slight fluctuations. So let me explain the fluctuations. If you look at the bigger screen, I have two video streams running into my phone. I have a web browsing session live here, and I'm filling the pipe with iPerf. Right. On top, you see a net meter application that measures the file layer throughput that I get in this demonstration. Right now, you see 74 megabits, which corresponds to a single right. carrier. 10 megahertz and if you maximum. Stay 10 yeah. megahertz. It is category 3 peak speed. And if you stay with me for 20 more seconds, you will see how the speed goes up as we turn on the second layer. Right. So the readiness and stability we have in our platform allows us to turn it on and off, do it at the application layer, for the system to automatically acquire a second channel, wow, okay. and then do the combinations in the Mac layer and the stack, yeah. and spit it out as IP traffic. Oh, really? Nice. So I would contend that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. I would also contend that, not sure, you'll see that many other places here in Barcelona, <laughs> but that's for you to find out. So what 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 carrier so do you turn on and off? Like band four, oh, okay. 1.7 gigahertz. Okay. So thanks for the patience. Because that's the one that might come in and out more often. Yeah, I mean, this yeah. carrier preference. If you have 700 and 1.7 gigahertz, you would probably run your primary network at the lower frequency for better reach and mobility. Right. And then capacity-wise, you would have band four deployed in urban areas or so. Cool. So um, as we continue through the demo lineup. Oh wow, you've got a bunch of demos. Yeah, yeah. No, we uh, we come out swinging. <laughs> we do envelope tracking oh, as well. Oh, awesome! Wow. Yeah, LTE power consumption sometimes is talked about. Doesn't it take a lot? And how are you going to do all of this? One right. of the technologies that the industry is working on to manage, especially uplink when you send data back to the network, right. is envelope tracking. We have an envelope tracking solution that I'll explain in a second. The basic concept of the envelope tracking requirement is that in OFDMA, your waveform changes with your actual transmission requirements right. all the time. And it goes up and down more or less, simply speaking. And if you cannot adjust to the requirements of your waveform, you have to overpower the system. You constantly transmit at a power at level the that gets yeah. all your signal out, irrespective of the fact that there's an area where there's no, no data, no traffic, so to speak. Now, if you can track the envelope, you see the red line very thin, you have a savings potential indicated here in green. Right. And that is what we do in envelope tracking. 21.892, yet again but this time in a technology development platform. To do envelope tracking, I need to do a number of real-time power measurements, right. so it has to be on a board like this. We need this. a power supply too. Do you have your own power supply? Uh, we have our power supply right oh, here, okay. so I'm okay. scoping out. This is total modem power. I have an OFDMA signal generator from Agilent that okay. sends my waveform into the board. Oh, okay. And then lastly, I have an oscilloscope that measures real-time the supply ah. voltage going into the power amplifier. Okay. And here you see the, the zigzag line just left me. Now you see a flat line. Yes. The flat line is when we turn off the envelope tracking mode okay. and you get this capability. We call it bypass mode. Your savings are nothing. You right. save nothing and you burn about, in this case, 1060 milliwatts. In a moment, we will turn envelope tracking back on, and then this display will adjust real-time to the measurements. Now you see that we have the flexible supply voltage. The voltage has gone from 3.5 to about 2.4, and you right. see here the line. And the power amplifier power draw dropped by 200 milliwatts, and we increased the PA efficiency from 34% to almost 42% power added efficiency and now it went back off right and we do all this while keeping a very close right. eye on spectral mass so we have um, a spectral mask analyzer that allows us to continuously monitor the shape of the transmitted very signal cool. yeah so you don't get weird and modulation yes. effects and an additional technology we overlay to basic envelope tracking is digital pre-distortion. Okay. And, and these technologies in particular that we spoke about last are proprietary innovations. There is no standard required to do any of this, so it gives us an opportunity to innovate. 